Thanks. Nerds. Geeks. And you. I've come here not to bear a big comic book, nor to praise day. Come here because I spent three dollars and ninety nine cents on this. Miles Morales, issue number thirty two. Issue number thirty two. 20 pages of actual story, 10 pages of ads, including the back cover, and I feel cheated. Get that rubbish out of my face. I feel cheated. I spent $3.99 plus tax on a comic book story that was only 20 pages long. It had 10 pages of ads, and the way the ads were placed, they interrupted the story. This wasn't a book where, hey, we're going to throw the ads at the back of the book. No, ads were constantly interrupting the flow of the story. I feel a way about it. I feel a way about it. So my question this morning is, when it comes to Big Comic Book, which is my name for Marvel and DC, are there... Too many ads in place in them. Are there too many ads? And not enough story. Again, 20 pages of actual content, 10 pages of ads, including the back cover. At least nine of those pages could have been utilized for more story. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. We live in a world where comic books are competing against not only manga, they're competing against streaming services for TV shows, video games, movies, books. Remember books? They're like comic books without pictures. I know. Calming down. I know. And so, when I look at this, and I'm counting these pages, because, and this is nothing against the Miles Morales story at all. This has uh, become a norm when it comes to the Big Two in recent years, as far as let's shove as many ads in this book as we can. We're going to shove as many ads as we can, and... If we give you extra pages, oh, you're going to pay for it. That $3.99 is now $4.99 or $5.99. And while we're doing that, we're going to shove some more ads in there. So instead of the 10 ads in this one, you might get 13. You may have 13 pages of ads. So... What do you think? Do comic books have too many ads and not enough story? Now, if the ads were put in place to help drive the price down of the book, you know what? I can understand to a degree. But these ads are not in place to drive down the cost of the books. Most of them are in-house ads. People aren't paying Big, the big two to advertise in their books, in their books in large numbers. Let's be honest. Most of these are in-house ads for their other books, products, uh, games, and so forth. And I get it. I get it. But there should be a limit on how many ads you place in a particular comic book. Now, having said that, people, you know, they're like, well, you're complaining about a book that's three ninety nine and you got twenty pages of content. Maybe this morning I might be doing that. But people have been complaining about the rising cost of comic books for years. These same people will go on Kickstarter and Indiegogo and pay twenty dollars for a book that's twenty pages and have to wait a year or more to actually get it. Same people. 
And the narrative is, well, I'm supporting indie comics. I'm supporting this creator. I'm supporting my friend. Or I'm part of a backer group. So it's 20 of us. We back, back each other's stuff. That way nobody's campaign fails. Happens a lot. That's why when you see people, they're like, oh, I hate indie go go. They'll blame Comicsgate. But in reality, it's a lot easier to fake the numbers in Kickstarter than it is in Indiegogo because the money goes through automatically. Kickstarter, you can create all kind of fake accounts and pledge this amount and that amount. And from the outside looking in, it looks like these projects are very successful. And I tell people, have you heard of any of these creators that are launching book number one? Got 10,000, got 15,000, got 20,000. If the vast majority of you have never heard of these people, that means they don't have an audience to get that kind of money. So the answer is, oh yeah, they're part of a backer group or they created fake uh, credit card uh, accounts and they back majority of it itself. It happens. It happens every day. So back to the ads. I'm looking through this book. And I started going through some more uh, Spider-Man books. It's not just Spider-Man. It's any books from the big two. And, again, wow, you open it up, two pages of ads. But it's one page. Not even two pages in, another ad. Another. You see what I mean about these ads interrupting the story? Another. Wow. Literally, the next page. More ads. More ads. Don't forget the back cover ad. Gotta have that. Let's go back to Miles Morales. Bam. You're in there. Another. Another. We can't even get five pages in to this book without ads. You get the idea. So, my question to you, I guess it's a two-fold question. Are there too many ads in comic books today? And do you feel that these ads interrupt the story? Or do they not bother you at all? You don't care. You don't, you're like, I just pay my money. I just want to read my book. I don't care about the ads. Let me know in the comments what you think. Are there too many ads in comic books? Let me know. If you don't give a shit, just say, yo, any comic book guy, I don't give a shit. You drink, you're up too early in the morning. This is a non-issue. If it's a non-issue, let me know. You feel it's a non-issue. Also, while you're at it, let me know what you think about paying a premium price for a Kickstarter or an Indiegogo book where you're not, you don't mind paying 20, 30 bucks for a comic book that may be 20 pages. But you'll complain about a book that's $3.99. I want to know why. Why is it you'll complain about paying $3.99 or $4.99 from, for a Marvel or DC book, but you're perfectly okay with doing it for paying $20, $30 for a book from an uh, unknown creator. I know. I'm an Andy Comic Book Guy. Just want to make a quick video. It's early. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. It really helps the channel out. I love each and every one of you. Now I finished my coffee and gonna read some more comic books. I have a stack of books that people have sent me that I am gonna review very soon. Sooner than you think. Have a good day.